I'll sometimes I'll say to my wife, how have I been this month or week or how have I been acting? Like, you know, because you, sometimes your head is so wrapped up in it. And she says, well, I can tell when you're having, when you're making money, I can tell when you're losing. And that right there, obviously what she means by that is I'm angry if I'm losing, I'm happy when I'm winning. And that's gone away since I started. But boy, was it really, I was in the thick of it. And that's, why would I be angry if I've lost money? Well, because I was greedy or angry that I didn't make a certain amount. And because that's greed, you know? I mean, look, uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you didn't have a successful trading day, but everything's taken care of, you know, you still have money in your bank account. Everyone's, how about the number one thing is everybody's healthy. You, you know, everybody's healthy. Everyone, you got your health and your, and you, at least, you know, you think you have your happiness. Everyone's healthy. No one's sickly. Then really it shouldn't matter. Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman, and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges. The brave, the curious, anyone who's out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. Hey, welcome to The Exploding Human. I am Bob Nickman. My guest today is Daniel Goodman. Daniel is a day trader, not the usual guest that I have on on the show, but we're going to talk about his profession as a day trader and what money means. But first, uh, I'd like to invite you to visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com. And when you go there, you can see uh, photos of all my guests, synopses of the episodes, listen to every episode. Also, there is a donate button. If you'd care to uh, support the show, that would be fantastic. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe for free to my YouTube channel, which is the Exploding Human with Bob Nickman. Add the with Bob Nickman and you'll find that YouTube channel. And why not listen to some episodes while you're doing other things on the computer? Not a bad way to go. So my guest today is Daniel Goodman, as I just said. Daniel is by profession a day trader. So he's moving money around all day long. But we are going to talk about what money is. What is it energetically? What does it mean? Is money always about money? No, it usually is not. There's a lot of power and uh, force with money. We all need it. We know that. And we're going to talk about how he has uh, struggled in certain areas with uh, greed and need and how his perception of money has changed over time as he has done this rather interesting career of day trading. So now it's time to listen to him. So here he is. This is Daniel Goodman. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning. Bob, I'm, how are you? I am good, and uh, I'm so glad you're doing this podcast. We're going to try to figure out a way to talk about money in a way that isn't really about money, because it never is, is it? Money isn't about money. No. It's, I remember somebody saying, uh, everything has to do with sex except sex, you know, <laughs> as far as like advertising yes. or this or that. You look at lingerie catalog. Is it anything to do with lingerie? No, but when it comes to the actual thing, then it's like whatever. So anyway, I thought I'd bring that up. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes complete sense. But so, yeah. you know, to me, you know, what I've kind of learned over the years that money's about uh, uh, security, uh, power, uh, self-worth. There's a lot of ego trapped in it. There's... Um, and there's a lot of unhealthy activity or, around money to get it and to keep it. And as somebody who, who basically, I mean, you make your living as a, as a day trader. So all day long, you're, or well, however long you're doing it during the day uh, is, is about specifically making money trading things back and forth with other people who are trying to do the same thing. That's what it comes down to. You know, when it comes to day trading, um, it's all money. And, you know, in my, in my case, 
I'm not, I'm trading, you know, I'm a, I'm, I do it for myself and I'm, you know, personally, I'm not a stock broker, so I don't call up somebody and, and, you know, ask them to, you know, buy a stock through our company or investment banking firm or whatever it is. Uh, so it's my money actually, which even makes it more, I guess, interesting. Could you say like, you know, if you're a car salesman and a guy walks on the lot and wants to buy a car, you're not talking about, you know, money. You're, you're talking money is the end factor. But, you know, the, you're selling the car. In this case, for me, it's it's all money it, it, from beginning to the end or from beginning of the trade to the end of the trade. Um, you're taking money and investing it and then, you know, you're flipping it. Uh, and and so it's it's naturally goes without saying that it's an extremely, extremely greedy business. I mean, there's lots of businesses that are greedy, but this is, you know, uh, uh, I guess a high level of greed. In the stock market. Yeah. Uh, you know. See, that's what I think about when I hear somebody says uh, somebody's a day trader. I'm thinking of a shark and somebody who's greedy and maybe even a little dishonest, mm. manipulative of numbers. And this is what I think. Now, I'm probably wrong uh, or I'm right at a certain percentage of those people. But you're not that guy. You have a different approach to this than most of the people I uh, would think right. would have. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, I think, you know, as I mentioned, stockbroker. So, you know, everyone thinks stockbrokers, not everybody, but you know, like they get that bad rep because, you know, naturally first things first, stockbroker is not, you know, they're asking you to invest your money. So they call you up and say, Hey, I want you to buy, you know, Apple and they're making a commission off of your purchase and they're making a commission if you decide to sell it and it's not their money excuse me, it's not, it, you know, it, it's, it's, they're risking your money. Um, and, you know, either they're getting the salary plus their commissions or strictly commission, whatever it is. So to answer your question, and you're right, no, I'm not that guy, because I'm trading with my money. Uh, I don't, I don't run a hedge fund or anything like that and borrow people's money. I mean, maybe one day I will. But for now, no, uh, it's all my money. Um, and I don't interact with anybody. I stare, if I'm talking, you know, if, if my wife hears me talking to, she, I'm talking to myself while I'm trading. I'm talking to the computer screen. Uh, and I don't know anybody on the other end of the trade. Because remember, if I, because I, you know, I focus on trading options, stock options. Um, and when I make my trade, when I buy an option, you know, naturally there's a seller at the other end. I have no idea who that person is. So this is my income. And I, and I treat it like a job. And, you know, so, uh, yeah, it, 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 I'm not that guy. I'm not that shark who's going to convince you to take your life savings and put it into a stock or a bond or whatever the heck it is. And no, it's, it's my job, my money, my investment. And it's a totally different ball game. What, so what is your, your feeling about what money is? I mean, some people I know, they say, you know, money is just energy. And you can look at energy in a lot of different mm. ways. Wow. And, um, you know, what, how do you feel, you know, is it something that you see as the more I get, the happier I'll be, uh, this is something I'll, I'm doing cause it's fun for me. Uh, I'm good at it. So I like it. If I make a lot today, that's nice, but I don't care if, as long as I'm doing not, you know, really messing right. up. What is your right. attitude about it? Like, cause it seems like you're pretty content with what you're doing and not feeling a ton of pressure and maybe i'm wrong <laughs> yeah, well uh <laughs> i was definitely not content uh you know when i first started it was it was the opposite i was off the walls and you know started this started day trading with absolutely less than zero knowledge less than zero in fact my wife and i were watching the the hbo series uh geez is it hbo or is it showtime i think it's showtime billions what is it hbo or showtime i i don't know i I've never okay there's show the show, oh, it's a great show called Billions, and it's uh, it's about a guy who runs a hedge fund, uh, and he's you know he does he he gets involved in insider trading and blah blah blah. But the point is, we're watching it, and I'm like, you know, I think I'm gonna I like to try some stock trading. I like to jump into the stock market. I had been watching it a little bit prior to that, uh, but I had no knowledge of it. So I put in some money in into a brokerage account, TD Ameritrade. And they're a big, you know, the TD is one of the big three, Charles Schwab, E-Trade, TD Ameritrade. And I just started playing with it and losing. 
and losing and losing. And, but as this process went on, I knew that I had a knack for it, you know, and I understood it, but then you get to that part about money and the demons and everything you have to fight uh, to make yourself a consistent, profitable day trader. Cause it's really unlike any other job. It, 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 it's, you know, I mean, it really is. Uh, and I'll explain that in a little, in a little bit, but uh, I, I at first had to fight with the, you know, that G word and it's not gratitude, it's greed. You know, you learn, I, I learned to become grateful later. Um, and I try to practice gratitude, you know, in a general standpoint, you know, every day, you know, but what I uh, found out was how greedy it is. You know, you make a thousand dollars day trading in the morning, immediately you tell yourself, gee, that was easy. You know, if you had a good, you know, it could be in the first 10 minutes of the morning, whatever your goal is, you initially want to go for 1500 or 2000 or whatever, you know, it's all relevant, whether it's $50 to a hundred thousand to two, or whether it's a hundred thousand, depending on how big of account you have. And, you know, if, you, if it's your job, uh, then I, and obviously I had other forms of income before, when I started day trading, but this become now my main uh, source of income or the, uh, when I first started the greed was, it was incredible. Like I said, you, you made a thousand bucks. You, you want to get to two, you make 2,500, you say, let me push it to three. And that's also the, the thin line between day trading and gambling. But, you know, you're asking what does money mean to me? And, you know, besides the obvious uh, with, you know, you need, look, everybody needs money. We all know that. But, you know, then what you got to fight with is what you're willing to do to get it, A, uh, and B, once you've made enough money to pay for the most important things in life, you know, like make sure you got food in front of you and all your bills and your mortgage or your rent and car and all that stuff. Once you've crossed that line, then, you know, uh, then you start to get, I guess, greedy. I mean, or, or, or you just want a little bit more. Um, and then that's where it starts to get interesting, in my opinion. Uh, okay, I've got all my, I'm making this much money. I got all my bills paid. All right, I'm good to go. I'm set. Now, right then and there, you should be very grateful, and very happy. And especially if you're doing this with day trading. I mean, I've made lots of money in an hour of day trading. And I got to tell you about 90%, if not more of the time that I sit and continue to trade because of greed. Because what happens is you go, okay, I've, I've hit my goal. I've had a good week. I've hit my goal. Um, you know what? I was looking at that. God, I, was, I saw the most beautiful two-tone Submariner Rolex watch. I'm going to push a little bit more so I can get that watch. All right, then and there, you've lost already. And, you know, having lots of money can bring you negative energy, or you could you could you could uh, project negatively. You could project positively, and also the opposite: losing money and not having enough can make you a very angry, negative person. And you know, it's just a trip. I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there in social media right now, and you know, money. You know, there's this. I'm not, I'm, I don't name drop, but you know, there's people out there. One big real estate guy, you know, keep keep continues preaching. Money does not buy you happiness. No, it does not. It doesn't buy you happiness because I guess happiness comes from inside. But, you know, yes, we know the obvious. Um, money does buy you comfort. We know that. I think you know somebody told that to me a long time ago in a job interview actually, and they were asking me, "This, you know, what money buys you? The one thing it buys you, comfort." Correct. So that that's another fine line. You know, I, I, I know that you're supposed to be, you know, or at least is what I've been trying to learn is you got to be happy with whatever you have. And then if you have lots of money, you know, in my, in my, you know, in my, in my case, if I make, if I, I'm content and happy, with everything I have, and you make a big stock trade, then you just have more money. Great. But that shouldn't matter. And you know what? Hey, that sometimes can be a struggle. You know, it really can because you get caught up in this stock trading business with, you know, the shoulda, coulda, woulda's. I should have done this. I should have done that. 
And therefore I could have made this much more. Yeah. That's something that I would probably struggle with. It's like, Oh, I, I, I just made X. I could have made a two X if I had just done this. <laughs> I did that for years. The should have, could have, would have. And somebody that's, you know, a more experienced options trader or stock trader than myself said, it's not the actual losses that make you lose money in the stock trading world or day trading world. It's not the losses. That's not how you're going to lose. It's the should haves and the could haves and the would haves. And, you know, FOMO plays mm -hmm. a you know, fear of missing out plays. Oh my God. A, a insane role, a huge role in stock trading, because that's the one thing is your fear of missing out on a move that, you know, Amazon shoots up $200. You didn't get in, you missed it. So what do you do? You buy at the top greed. That's also a connection of greed. You buy at the top. It's like, you know, and that's also a rookie move too. I did that all the time. You know, they say, don't chase it. And that, that's, you know, that also, you know, comes with patience and discipline, but comes in the whole learning cycle, but that's also, you know, that, that's greed and, and that's fear of missing out and the should haves and the could haves. And you sit around uh, all day over the weekend I could have, I should have, I would have. And I remember my wife and I, you know, having breakfast, lunch, or dinner on the weekends. And she's looking at me and she's, where are you? You know, you're not here with me right now. You know, what am I thinking about? The day trade that I screwed up on. I mean, it's, it's crazy, you know? So, I mean, it is a real dramatic process and more so, you know, you don't check into an office. I mean, your office is where you want to make it as far as a day trader. You know, you have total control. You can't blame anybody for your mistakes, except yourself. You can't blame your boss. You definitely cannot blame the market. Can't ever blame the stock market for losing it, 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 because that, it, the stock market is what it is. You have to trade whatever the market's handing you. And you know uh, you can't blame the media. You can't blame anything. Um, you shouldn't blame much other than yourself and anything in life because that's the only thing that we have control over is ourselves. And so it's a real challenge I found myself challenging myself and finding, um, you know, out a lot about me and, and, uh, you know, if that, you know, sometimes I'll say to my wife, how have I been this month or week or how have I been acting like, you know, cause my, you, sometimes your head is so wrapped up in it. And she says, well, I can tell when you're having, when you're making money, I can tell when you're losing. And that right there, well, obviously what she means by that is I'm angry if I'm losing, I'm happy when I'm winning. And that's gone away since I started, but boy, was it really, I was in the thick of it. And that's why would I be angry if I've lost money? Well, because I was greedy or angry that I didn't make a certain amount. And cause that's greed, you know, I mean, look, uh, if you, if you, if you, if you didn't have a successful trading day, but everything's taken care of, you know, you still have money in your bank account. Everyone's how about the number one things? Everybody's healthy. You, you know, everybody's healthy. Everyone, you got your health and your, and you, at least, you know, you think you have your happiness, everyone's healthy, no one's sickly, then really it shouldn't matter. And just like a job, you know, you close up for the day and you're done and you get them the next day. Would you say that um, like the waves, the highs and the lows have gotten less high and less low and that you're more even in terms of when something goes your way or doesn't go your way, you don't get quite as... Um, affected you're not as reactive to the ups or downsides it, that's what it sounds like to me yeah yeah that's yeah and like i mentioned it was in the beginning it was the total opposite it was it was it was you know jumping for joy and you know uh, when you made a great trade and you've made money and then the world is coming to an end and life <laughs> sucks yeah. yeah the world like acting like the meteor you know, is coming. The apocalypse is here because you had a bad day. Um, and that's leveled off. And don't get me wrong, just the other day, you know, I got into a trade and I even said to myself, I should probably wait for this one to come down a little bit to get a better position, whatever. And I didn't. Did I beat myself a up a little bit? Yeah, I did. Did I beat myself up the same amount four years ago? Absolutely not. Uh, so it, it's a process just like, I mean, look, it's still a job or it's still a way of making an income, just like anything else, you know, uh, a lawyer, uh, could lose a case in the, in his first year of being a lawyer and he flips out, 
but maybe 10 years down the line, he loses a case because that's part of being a lawyer. Sounds a little bit like a gambler knowing when to walk away from a table. Uh -huh. You know, it's, yeah. um, and you know, when it's, when you're having a bad day to just stop for the day right. instead of trying to catch up. It's, and I guess people have different levels of uh, satisfaction during the, during the day at any job, like you're saying. And um, this uh, idea of, of your uh, mental state being tied to these external victories or losses is, is, is a very uh, uncomfortable way to live because then you're constantly yeah. a victim. Yeah. Of, um, <laughs> of, of outside yeah. forces, even a victim, you can be a victim of the upside too. It's like, Oh, I'm now I'm so elated. I got to get more, right. you know, if you're, That's if right. you're chronically dissatisfied, uh, anyway, if you're that personality too much, isn't going to be enough. And <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. That's right. You know, when is enough enough? What's the famous line of wall street? You know, uh, Charlie Sheen's talking to, you know, Michael Douglas and he's saying, how many, how many yachts can you jet ski behind, Gordon? You know, when is enough enough? You know, and that's the thing. I mean, when is enough enough? I mean, that there's no answer to that. So you just, that's the whole, I guess that's the whole point. You know, somebody says, how much money will keep you happy? Well, you know, uh, there's no answer for that. If somebody says, I'm going to give you $100 million tomorrow and you don't have to ever work again, are you going to be happy? I mean, it's a silly thing to talk about. And that's another thing I wanted to bring up that I, struggle with and that's comparing myself to people that's a big one and that will really slow you down and it could even halt you in your tracks because if you if i start looking at the guy if i if i made a good day you know i made a few thousand dollars or ten thousand what would you know the money the dollar figure doesn't matter because everything's relevant um but then i see a guy on social media that says that he made a hundred thousand in a day which they do that, you can, especially in this market. It's, it's a wild, volatile market. And for day traders, we need volatility. We need stocks in the market to move drastically up or down to make money. Um, and then you say, God damn it, why didn't I, you know, make a hundred? I got to start making a hundred thousand a day now. I mean, you know, and there you go. You, you might as well just don't ever trade again or until your mind is right. Be happy with what you have. And look, you know, there's a friend of mine that says to me, you know, obviously we, we know the old saying, if you're not happy with what you have, you're not going to be happy with what you get. And boy, is that just so damn true. And the, this friend of mine said, you know, if you're sitting around a table and everyone takes, you know, all their problems out of their pocket and puts them on the table, most likely you're going to take yours and put it right back in your pocket. And, and that's the point. And it's just a, you got to be content with yourself and don't get me wrong. I wasn't. And, and I struggled until, you know, and, and, and listen, I'm, I'm actually sober. Uh, I'm almost six years sober. I'll be six years sober next year. And Congrats. thank you very much, sir. Yeah, and great. you know, uh, oh, it's a good feeling. And so, you know, uh, being, uh, I, someone that used to drink a lot and, you know, uh, abuse substances, it's, uh, I did that out of greed. <laughs> it was never enough. So I'm already fighting with that. Before I even made my very first stock trade back in August of 2016, before I even did that, I was already struggling with greed because that's what I was suffering from. And, you know, I started day trading when I had a little over a one year sober and my daughter, my first child was, was born. So I had a lot going on. My head was crazy, crazier than it was now. And I had my daughter. And so, you know, taking on a, 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 a possible way of income like this was, was pretty intense. But the greed is, is, is a big thing. And yes, um, your, your comment about, you know, a gambler knowing when to walk away. Well, uh, if everybody walked away in Vegas, if everybody brought what they wanted to lose to Vegas and they only lost that, there would still be only the sands the El Rancho, the Flamingo, there would only be about six hotels. And know how to, and this is huge. And I want to make this, I want to say this, uh, give yourself credit. And that's one thing I never, ever did. You know, not just with day trading, but I didn't give myself credit for the wins and the success and you know, a success that I've had as a father, a husband, 
I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes, I do. I, I know I'm a good father and a good husband. Do I make mistakes? Of course. It's, you know, but I didn't give, I don't give myself credit enough. So, you know, giving yourself credit and patting yourself on the back and finding a way to celebrate a successful day, week, whatever month, you know, do that. Yeah. How many people um, do you think do day trading? I, I don't know anyone personally, except for you. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I, I've awesome. never, I've never talked about <laughs> this, this particular um, profession. I don't know how many exactly. I know that a Robin hood is a brokerage that uh, is good for beginners. Um, the fees are small and it, it, I think I mean, this would be something I'd have to Google. Most people I would think would not be successful. You always hear that don't do that. And I don't know if that's, you know, regular brokers are basically putting that message out there because they want the business, but, <laughs> but you always right. hear, you know, uh, that it, the people that go at it themselves lose. You always. Yes. Hear. And I, that's right. And you're absolutely right. And actually the percentage they say is anywhere from 10 to uh, 10% make it. I've heard 3%. I've heard 2%, whatever it is. It's a hard one to prove, but there are millions of traders out there. I know that Robin hood, I, I don't know if it was in the 20 million range or the 30 million range, or they broke records during the, when the, when the lockdown happened with the pandemic, Robin hood broke records of how many people were opening up accounts. Uh, the dollar amount doesn't really matter how many people are putting it in. I mean, I just talked to a friend of mine's uh, wife who said she put in $300, you know, but you're going to lose. It's putting yourself through school. And that's how I uh, <laughs> looked at it uh, and, and justified it. Cause I had some, I lost for the first year until I was consistent and I stuck with it and it was hard. It was really hard <laughs> until one day in Miami, we were stopping over Miami before going to Berlin. Actually, I was making a good amount of money. I was like, you know, 5,000 a day, 7,000, 10,000. It was like two weeks in a row. And my wife was going, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> now, wait, this could be working. Wait a second. You might have, okay. Cause she wasn't saying that before. I can promise you that, you know, and that's the difference is, you know, uh, I, I, she saw that that wasn't too much luck involved this last couple of weeks that, you know, she's okay. Now, naturally I hit bumps in the road after that. Why? Greed. You know, it was, I had to conquer that greed. I had to conquer greed. I had to conquer, you know, when to uh, get out of the trade, which is also greed. You know, greed is not, not walking away is, is, is greed. Uh, not taking profits is greed. Cause we all know that saying, uh, you can never go broke taking a profit. And guess what? It's very true. Uh, you know, there's multiple, and then there's technical things that you have to conquer with, you know, FOMO, when to enter the trade and all this stuff. It's a big package. It's, it's learning. It's going through college. It's going through school. First college, and then you got to go through this school and graduate with trading. And a lot of people just don't have the money. I had money. And boy, let me tell you, I did some wild things. I borrowed money, which I have now paid back. Um, and it, it was nuts, but I was, I, I went, I went with it hundred percent. I knew I could do it. The thing you just said, I knew I could do it. And I've talked about this with people, um, on the podcast before that from a wide variety of disciplines and things that they've done, that seed of, I knew I could do it is the thing that most people, um, you know, uh, it drives them. And I, I'm not sure everyone has that feeling or it's, there's some intuition based on some experience, but it's there, there, there's a, a voice somewhere inside people that, that says, I knew I could do it. Where did that voice come from? And, and why did you listen to it when you, maybe you hadn't listened to it prior if, if it was there, I'm, I'm always interested in, you know, that, that, uh, calling from you yeah. know that that piece of of the puzzle for no matter what anyone does it's like i always knew i could do it i i i can't you know let's see when did i get the calling well when i was consistently profitable was great but that was like a year later but when i started making consistent profits but i just felt it i just you know what it was i knew i was good right from the start but let me tell you, 
the the main points that people struggle with like for example i would make correct trades so i would make correct trades more than 50% of the time you know 70 to 80% of the time i'd meet and let me let me um let me uh, deep uh, dive further into that. When I say I made a correct trade, I did my research. I, I bought this stock, figured it was going to move either up or down, whether I was going long or whether I was shorting it. And for anybody that doesn't know what that is, you know, going long means you're buying the stock or the option for it to move up. And if you're shorting something, that means you want it to go down. But I would make correct tr trades and be profitable. But what I struggled with was. I, I would be, I'd look at my screen, I'd be up a thousand dollars, whatever I'm up, 500, 600, 200, whatever. And I wouldn't take my profits. And as a day trader, that's what you're supposed to do. So I wasn't taking profits and that's greed. And what happened was there was times from the first time I started to, to the year was, I was like, I'm done. I can't do this. I can't do this. Now, obviously the reason I was saying that is because I was losing consistently. And the reason I was losing was not because I was making wrong trades. It was because I was greedy. Mm. I mean, greed plays the biggest role in day trading, whether you're going to succeed or whether you're not going to succeed, you know, whether you walk away or you don't. And that's just how, that's just how it is in this business. So, you know, I knew I was good the first few months. I just knew it. I, I liked it. I liked the game of figuring this whole thing out. I also liked that I didn't work for anybody. I mean, that's what I liked. I'm not, I'm not, I'm answering to no one. And that takes big discipline, but it's huge amount of freedom. I'm answering to nobody. The moment that I became consistent is when I stopped gambling in the sense that I didn't take the trade for the rush. And as I mentioned before, I'm sober now. I love a rush. You know, back when I was, you know, partying, I loved getting the rush. That's why I drank more than I should have and anything else more than I should have. I loved it. So, you know, this also kind of fulfilled, you know, the void in the addiction that I had. And so I, I uh, had to, you know, be aware of that. And everybody said that to me in the beginning, you know, you're doing this, you're, you're, you're replacing this with alcohol. And maybe it was, but I stuck with it. But that's the answer to your question. Yeah, I, I mean, it, 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 I just felt it, and I and, and I liked it, and and I liked it a lot. And uh, but to finish what I was saying, wh what what separates a gambler and a non-gambler with trading is: are you taking the trade for the rush, or is it the smart trade to make? If there's no trade to take of whatever your structure is, you don't take a trade. What is the level of um, research and when do you do that? Is that when you're not on the computer uh, looking? Is that is that another big chunk of your day? How does that work? So usually day traders, they do their research, intraday day traders doing their research the morning up. So, you know, West Coast time, market opens at 6.30, you got to be up at five the early, the latest. So you got to get ready, have your coffee, take your shower, whatever it is you do, and do your research for an hour and figure out what's going on. Uh, because remember, you could trade for 10 minutes. You can get into a trade and get out and make a killing, you could lose a killing, but you could make money in an hour, 10 minutes, five minutes. I mean, a lot of day traders get in and out in a matter of seconds. I used to trade that way a long time ago, too exhausting for me. <laughs> Seems like it would be um, a dizzying amount of uh, <laughs> letters and numbers moving around in your head. I would lay down at night I, if I did this and those numbers and letters would be swirling around in my brain. I wouldn't be able to sleep. I can just by listening to you, I'm already going, I could never do this. I got a patch <laughs> of gray hair on this side of my chin and gray on this side. And I got some gray chest hairs going on right now. And I've had sleepless nights yeah. and, and, and it is dizzying and you really got to, it's not your average job. So, you know, look, if you're up early in the morning doing your research and you trade for a few hours, the amount of stress within just a couple hours, an hour before trading and two hours into trading, the amount of that three hours of work is could be the same amount as a 12-hour day. The biggest thing that I didn't do, 
I also talk about is that I didn't set realistic goals. You got to set realistic goals. Look, if you have a $5,000 trading account, which actually you really can't do any intraday trading, you need to have $25,000 or more. It's a federal law for most brokers to make an unlimited amount of buying and selling in the same day. But if you're trading with 5,000 bucks, please don't expect to make $10,000 a day off that, right? You know, it's ridiculous. If you're trading with $5,000, you can look at making $500 a week. Sure you can, easily. And you got to set realistic goals. And, and that's what I didn't do. And look, who, who with anything in life, it doesn't matter. Set a realistic goal. You know, if you're, you know, and, and I think that's, that's, that's a huge part of it. I mean, that's huge in life too. You know, where do I want to be in three years from now or six months and short-term and medium and long-term goals? So it's, it's really about uh, maintaining a, a balance to do any of these things. You know, uh, I mean, this, that's right. even though this is sort of a, a different kind of a way to make a living, it's no different than anybody else in the sense that if you're out of balance, you're not going to be good that, that, that's right. at that time. And, That's right. And it's keep the priorities set, have the balance, and then go into it knowing that it is just the job. It's not, it's not necessarily you, <laughs> you know, it's, it's what you do. <laughs> Absolutely. It's what, and you know, look, uh, I, I know somebody that um, told me once they said, I started uh, asking them questions about work. I was actually working for them. And I was at their house. They had other employees at their house. I started asking questions. They said, stop. Let's, why are we talking about work right now? You know, I thought, well, you know, I want to talk about a little bit of work and this and that. And they said, I, when I'm home, I'm home. I don't talk about work. You know, it just hit me. And I thought, geez, because this person worked hard, but and I thought, you know, I bet you this person's working 24 seven and they're, they weren't because it doesn't matter how many hours a day you work, how much are you getting done? And that's it. And, and, and this person had a great life, has a great life. And, and, and that was, it was interesting. <clears throat> they didn't bring their work home. Look, my father passed almost two years ago on November 1st, and it was the worst, you know, the deepest loss I've ever had. He was my best friend. He was the most incredible man that I've ever, he was, he was the greatest guy. He was my best friend. He, it was just, it was a hard loss. And, um, you know, and, uh, you know, talk about not getting time back. And so my goal now is to be the best dad that I can be to my kids that he was to me, you know? And so I have a 10 month old right now, me and my almost 10 months, 10 months in November 5th. And, uh, it's just so fabulous. And, and I'm really learning how to, when I see my, my, my child, my Michael playing right now, I'm there. And that's one thing being present is, is, is something that I struggle with and I'm, I'm getting better and better a little bit every day. And for my daughter, when she's saying something to me, I'm, I'm there and I got to be there because that's the greatest. And when I'm doing that, I'm not even, I, I, nothing is on my mind about trading. That's for sure. And, and it wasn't that way four years ago when I started. That's the point to remember. So I'm improving. Everybody's constantly practicing and improving and that's what I'm doing. No. Congratulations on that. Being present is the, one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's hard, <laughs> especially my mind is busy. And, you know, I, I constantly try to not try. I constantly, uh, you know, uh, create scenarios that aren't really there. That's a whole other topic. That's more of a, let me know if you have a, a psychology uh, session, you know, let me, but, you know, creating scenarios that aren't there and keeping your mind because in my opinion, if I create a scenario, that's, I'm, that's not, I'm, I'm living in a complete uh, 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 parallel universe. It's not real. You know, if I'm, you know, like, like, yeah, like what I'm going to, what I was going to talk about today, I can create anything I want to say in my head, but it's not real. It's not happening. It's not, you know, and, and I find that I do best when I'm about to, I guess, I don't know, talk with somebody or be on something or, you know, uh, whatever it is, just talk, you know, think about what you're going to say when you're there. I mean, cause that's it. I mean, I create scenarios. What am I going to say to this person? I create arguments in my head with people that I haven't even met yet. You know, when I meet this person, it's, 
It's crazy. Yeah. But that's the that's the suffering of that's the delusion of not being present. Yeah. So, and then then you plan like, okay, with contingency. Yes. They say this. Well, I'm going to counter it with that. If they don't say that and they say this other thing, oh, I got something for that one too. <laughs> then you actually right. meet them and it's nothing. None of it comes nothing. up. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. They don't say one word. You want to go, what? hey, man, you were supposed to be an asshole because I had all this shit prepared. But that time that you're in your head thinking about this meeting that's may or may not ever happen, that's supposed to happen. You miss out on what's happening. Yeah. So well, thanks for talking to me today. Oh, we kind of went all, all in a lot of great directions, in my opinion. I think I got a good show here. Good. I, I, I want to so. say something that I read about money since we're talking about money. Yeah. There's only two things wrong with money. Mm -hmm. Not enough and too much. That's right. That's for sure. And I have a story about that. And it's all relative, of course. Of course. I, had two, I had two friends back in the days when I was a comedian and mm -hmm. they were two, um, two comedians and they were, they had, we had done this gig and one said to the other one, you want to go out and, uh, you know, have some fun and, you know, maybe go to a couple of places. And the other yeah. guy goes, yeah, but I don't have any money. Mm. The other guy goes, well, don't worry about it. Cause I got a lot. Mm. So they go, let's just put our money together and see what we can do. They each had $20. Both of them. Mm -hmm. One had none and the other had a lot. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's a yeah. fabulous story. Well, thanks so much, Daniel. And uh, on, onward, much success, much happiness to uh, you and your family. And Likewise, man. Likewise, Bob. Well, thanks for listening to The Exploding Human, folks, and uh, visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman, and please come back to uh, listen to some other episodes, and big thanks again to Daniel Goodman. Thanks so much for listening in. Have a great day.